Okay, bye. Well, Rick, hello again. Hello again, from Dallas to New York. Yes, yes, because uh, we talked with you and with Dave Thomas when you were in town for Strange Brew. Right, I wish I'd gotten a chance to see more of Dallas other than the Lowe's Anatole Hotel, but <laughs> we did drive through. Boy, what an incredible. I've never seen architecture. It's like Chicago, only modern. There was some fantastic architecture in Chicago, in the suburbs especially. Yeah. New industrial developments. I'm a supporter of Dallas. Good, good. Well, we'd love to have you back sometime. Uh, I have to assume now that, uh, because we talked about this when you, you and Dave were there for Brew, that uh, you would be doing individual projects, that you wouldn't just forever be together doing things. Um, now, has there been a, a total break or? Oh, no, not at all. We're, we're very close and we're planning a couple of things. Um, Dave's right now writing a script for the two of us. Mackenzie Brothers are doing another album. Um, we just uh, got into different things because I went and did a Walter Hill picture called Streets of Fire right after Strange Brew. In fact, while Dave was finishing Strange Brew. And um, then right after that, I got this, and Dave came to New York to do a television series. So um, we just both felt that it would be better for us if we did more than just things together. Well, might you be doing another McKenzie Brothers movie? I don't know. Um, I'd like to. Um, I don't know when we'll, we'll have time or, or what will happen. It's so hard to say because things come up that you don't anticipate. Not only are we, are we trying to plan our careers, but things outside that you have no effect on come up. Like somebody all of a sudden calls and wants you to play a part in a movie and you want to do it because it's a great director, a great script or something. So um, I, I don't know. I'd like to do another one though. You're, of course, in Ghostbusters. That's the Ghostbusters. That's what we're here to talk about. And uh, obviously, you all must have had just one whale of a time making it. Oh, sure. Um, you can't. You can't be with Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Harold Ramis and not have fun. I mean, you know, they're really funny, funny men. Great you had guys. to know at least Dan before, didn't you? Oh, I knew. I knew everybody. I, I had worked only with Bill, though. Bill did a guest shot on SCTV on one show, so we had briefly cross paths and uh, Dan actually I'd worked on a script with Dan um, peripherally Dave Thomas and Dan are old friends and they were working on a script for the three of us to do so I was involved in some meetings on that and Harold I replaced on Second City and had run into him at parties and at meetings here and there but we had never worked together and Ivan and I kept meeting on Air Canada and on flights between Los Angeles and Toronto and we sort of said yeah someday we'll have to do something so when he called me to do this, I just, you know, of course I had to say yes. Rick, are you afraid because of this role, you're, uh, I'm going to say classic nerd, do you object? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad it's classic. Uh, um, uh, if you're going to ask if I'm afraid of only playing nerds, um, no, not at all. I, I do a lot of things, and if, you know, I enjoyed playing the role. Um, everybody loves a nerd, and it's fun to play them. Um, if somebody wanted to see a whole nerd movie, uh, I, I might consider it. I think there is a movie uh, with all nerds that I heard about, but I, I wasn't asked to be in that. So maybe I'm not that classic a nerd. I don't know. But no, I, um, I've done a lot of other things, so I'm not afraid of that at all. The beard is something new. Huh? Well, I'll just take it off. <laughs> yeah, I grew this for a, um, a role that I, that I didn't wind up doing um, for a number of reasons, and then I was inches from the barber's chair, because I don't want to try and take this off myself. I'll just I'll slit my neck. Um, and my agent called and said, hold the beard, because there might be something for the beard. So <laughs> you know, I don't know what that means. Does that mean that I'm involved, or do they, do they just want the beard? You know, it's, it's Rick Baker needs some facial hair for an ape he's working on. We, need, we may need the beard. Of course, the agent gets 10%. And Sorry. I just, involved with my facial hair. Yeah, go on. <laughs> so anyway, the beard is on hold. The beard is on hold. <laughs> the beard is on hold. Okay. And more uh, more on the 11 o'clock, maybe. <laughs> okay. 11 o'clock shadow, yes. All right. Uh, Streets of Fire, what are you playing in that? Um, in Streets of Fire, uh, I play the manager of a rock star, played by Diane Lane. Um, she gets kidnapped by a gang, so to speak, and um, in, in getting her back, I hire um, someone to do that. I find out later that he's an ex-lover of hers, which complicates the relationship. It's, um, in its own way, it's a, it's a real spectacle. Um, it's rock and roll, and I think kids are really going to find something in it. it uh, 
Walter Hill has, has peaked as a filmmaker. It is an exceptionally well-made piece of work. I've never seen post-production like this. I've never heard sound like this. There's a, there's a car in it, a fantastic car. I mean, it's a shiny, chopped, old hot rod sort of thing. And to get the sound for that car, the recordists, who are the best in Hollywood, they, they do Steven Spielberg's movies, and they did Raiders. They'd, um, they drove somewhere in Northern California because somebody knew about this car that had a great sound, and they mixed that with this custom motorcycle that somebody had, and they came up with this sound. I mean, there's precision in this movie that I've never seen in any other movie. And Ry Cooter does the score, plus there's songs by all kinds of terrific writers. It's, uh, it's a remarkable, remarkable piece of, piece of movie. I don't know if it's your type of movie, um, but as a student of film, which I'm sure you are, you'll probably really be impressed by, uh, by, by just the, the technical aspects of it. And then you're in Bre The Breakfast Club, John Hughes. No, as no? a matter of fact, I'm not. John Hughes and I are going to wait for another picture to work together. That's what the beard was for, actually. It was for Breakfast Club. Uh -huh. And um, at the last minute, we, we decided um, that we better wait for another movie. Because it, the movie evolved in the weeks leading up to my appearance in it. And um, in communicating with John, we decided it was better if he used somebody else for the role. Well, Rick, it's good to talk with you again. Yeah, it's nice to see you and again. And the beard. Good to talk, good to I'll talk with you. I'll let you know what happens with the beard. <laughs> okay, and congratulations on Ghostbusters. That's going to be one whale of a hit. Yeah, I think so. It's yeah. a lot of fun, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, it's a great movie. Well, come back to see us, and we'll drive you through the Anatole again. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Dallas. Is it hot there this time of year? Uh, yeah, it's about... Okay. Uh, you're cutting, like, about here yeah, or someplace? Yes, yeah. yeah, okay. Might you do another movie, a sequel to Strange Brew? Now, have you and Dave Thomas made a complete break? That asshole, I don't even talk to him anymore. Hey, hold it. Because <laughs> that picks up on my mind. Okay, that's all right. Okay. In this movie, you play what I would call a classic nerd. You object to that? Well, you're right. I, I'm sorry. I can't resist. I... <laughs> Being Canadian, I have to assume that maybe you knew Aykroyd, huh? The beard is new. The beard is the new look. What is your role in Streets of Fire? Okay. And then I understand you're doing The Breakfast Club with John Hughes. What about the breakfast club you're making with John Hughes? Okay, now let me just give you some reactions. One more thing, I uh, let me add in. Okay. So the beard is on hold. <laughs> okay, that should do it. <laughs> 